Hello? John, how'd you do? I am good, thank you. I just finished your book the other day, and uh, very fascinating. Ah, good. <laughs> All right, you mean well, you managed to read the whole thing? I can't believe yeah, it. Was, actually, it went really quick. It was a very enjoyable and great pictures, too. Now, look, let's be honest. We could talk for hours about all the songs and the albums that you've worked on, and many of them I've listened to many times over the years, but obviously we don't have the time. So if you ever come to Atlanta, no. let's do that. But uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what are, let's just start off with, what are some tips you can give to up-and-comers about getting a good sound whenever they're in the studio? many but the, the, the biggest one I would say would be always go out into the studio don't just stay in the control room and lift faders up having put microphones on instruments always go out in the studio and check what the musician's giving you because invariably it's better than what you're hearing in the control room <laughs> uh, uh, and if there's, a, if, if, if there's a problem with the sound it can very often be what you're doing and the way you're doing it and if you hear it if you hear what he's giving you in the first place uh, you'll get a better idea of how to solve it. Yeah, and you know, it's whenever it comes to writing, as you know, the the old saying about having a second set of eyes. Well, I guess kind of going into the studio is giving yourself, quote unquote, a second set of ears to make sure everything sounds right. Correct? Uh, I don't quite know what you mean by a second set of ears, but so I, I can't. Oh, I just meant someone else to make sure make sure that everything sounds as good as possible. You're yeah. hearing it there as opposed to outside, you know. In yes, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay, right. Gotcha. All right, well, I'm a huge Beatles fan, so i got to ask you, what was it like uh, during the Get Back, Let It Be sessions and uh, any kind of funny stories that stick out that uh, would surprise fellow Beatles fans like me? Um, the, what, it, what, what it was like working with them was fascinating. Um, I'd already worked with a lot of really established acts by the time I got to work with them in 1969. Um, but I was still quite nervous on the first date, <laughs> walking in the door. And uh, they, within minutes, they made me feel incredibly welcome, and it remained that way. Uh, they showed a great deal of respect for, 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 for me and what I was doing with them. And it was a really, really pleasurable experience. The, the, the worst moment came when there was a bit of an upset um, between them, and it rather looked like after a couple of days of working with them that my uh, my excitement about being involved with them for a whole project was was not going to come to any fruition, and uh, that I was going to be out of a job again. But uh, fortunately, after a couple of days, that got resolved. That was when when George decided he didn't want to be in the band anymore, and he came back. A couple of days later, and they passed it all up, and we we carried on again. But that that was that was a bit of an awkward moment. But other than that, it was really interesting, and I had a fantastic time working with them. I really enjoyed it. I know you. One thing that you mentioned in your book is that for you, if whenever you would work on a song, if you were one of the ones who either engineered it or produced it, it obviously was different whenever you would listen to it a couple months down the road, let alone years later. Um, because you were talking about the one band that you loved that you weren't part of it because you were able to hear their song with just a fresh set of ears, not as a producer or as an engineer. Is that the way it is with some Beatles and Stones songs where, well, oh, geez, you know, I was the engineer on this, so, you know, or is it just as, you know, special hearing it all these decades later? Well, obviously, I, I have a slightly different uh, recognition of a, of a record than, than somebody who wasn't involved or wasn't in the room when it was being recorded. But um, I'm sure, uh, without any question, I get just as much enjoyment from the performance uh, of, of the piece of music and, and certainly the skill of the writer who wrote it uh, as, any, as any punter. Yes, absolutely. That's very definitely. And obviously there are occasions when I'm reminded of a of a particular situation when a track was recorded. But to be honest with you, I can't remember most of it. I, was, I did so much, uh, an, an immense amount of work over many years, but I can't, I can't really remember specific instances uh, about individual songs particularly. Uh, but, I mean, for example, Honky Tonk Woman, if I hear the intro to Honky Tonk Woman, I immediately recall that session uh, because the... The producer, Jimmy Miller, played the cowbell on that, and the, and the intro is the cowbell and Charlie's bass drum. Yeah, and, and you, uh, you were the one I, of the ones who I was left the in the control side. room to record it. Yeah, yeah. and you, you wanted, can't always get what you want to be the A-side, right? I did. 
association would I know. <laughs> well, actually, I could have been right. You know, we'll never know, will we? <laughs> That's true. To this day, obviously, those are huge classics, and I think you're I right. still like both the songs equally. I must say. Oh, sure, so do I. Uh, and I believe you said Sticky Fingers was your favorite Stones album you did. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's true. I mean, it's all a bit of a blur, really. There's, there's good tracks on most of the stuff I did. I, I don't know that there's one album that sticks out better than than any of the others. I think the period that Nicky Hopkins was playing piano with them uh, and Mick Taylor was, was the lead guitar player in the band, for me, was the, was the best of the Stones stuff that I did anyway. Yeah. Um, well, what's on the agenda for... Uh Later to 2016, uh, 2015, 2016, any new projects, any new albums? I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm working with, Eric, I'm doing an album with Eric Clapton at the moment, which I'm really enjoying. Um, it's the first time we've worked together for 40 years. <laughs> so it's been quite, it's been really good fun and, and uh, quite wonderful to be a part of, I must say. Is this a live album or a studio album? No, no, it's a studio album. Oh, Okay. Yeah, because uh, actually you mentioned in your book that you and Clapton went a couple decades without talking to each other for a while, not because of a fight or anything, but just... Well, in fact, when he read the book, he called me up and said, I don't know what you... You know, because I said I, I missed him as a pal in the book. And as a result of the book, he rang me and said, well, I am still your friend. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and we had dinner, and then he asked me to make an album with him. So, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's extraordinary how, how writing the book and having it published has, has reconnected me with a lot of people from years ago and Eric certainly is one of them you know if you uh, ever do come to Atlanta and we do go out for a bite I'm going to steal your phone book because I think there's a lot of cool phone numbers in there and a lot of people I'd love to talk to <laughs> right um, is there one song or one album in, and I know because I looked at your thing and I, when I was looking I'm like my goodness how did he have time to do all this stuff and you're flying to LA and New York and all that in between and all that but uh, is there one song or one uh, thing that sticks out that says geez I wish I would have done X to that song instead of the way it went out on record or not uh, no I don't think there is actually uh, well that's no, good I'm, I'm, I, listen I've heard stuff that um, I've heard errors that I've made <laughs> uh, years later but but you know, there's no point in going there really you did what you did at the time, you did your best and uh, no, I'm pretty proud of what I've done I must say uh, um, I don't have any regrets about anything really uh, uh, I'm sure that some of the artists may well differ <laughs> but as far as I'm concerned I'm quite happy yeah, actually, sometimes mistakes are the coolest parts of songs. Like, you know, that famous song by Mamas and the Papas, I Saw Her Again Last Night. Uh, Danny yeah. Doherty comes in by mistake too early, but he catches himself, yeah. but they kept it in. Yeah. And it sounds, that's my favorite part of the song, and it's a mistake. Well, there you go. You see. Yeah. And, and in fact, a lot of the records that I've made, but certainly uh, from my perspective, the errors, the, the odd error that I made in mixing uh, proved to be beneficial. Uh, you know, I wish I'd have thought of it, but in fact, <laughs> it was a mistake <laughs> uh, uh, that, that, the, that the end product definitely benefited from. Uh, one other quick question. Uh, is there any album or any song out there that you weren't a part of, completely not a part of, and you're like, geez, I wish I was? Oh, uh, well, I tell you what, I've always liked live recording. I've, been, uh, I've done, made a lot of live albums, and uh, I've always enjoyed doing them. That there is... Uh, it's actually a movie and an album, a, a, a concert for George, it's called. Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, which, which was a concert put on the Abbott Hall a couple of years after George Harrison died with a, with a list of artists as long as your arm. And the, the, the recorded sound on that concert is absolutely astonishing. And uh, that's something I'd love to have been part of and, and was not. Gotcha. All right. Anything else that uh, we didn't go over? Anything else you'd like to add? No, that's, no. Buy the book. <laughs> well, I don't need to because I already have a copy. Uh, you already got it. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time. Been a big fan of yours for a long time. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. Bye bye. All right.